Sunday with Fox 10's John Hook. 26 people killed, several wounded, 20 others wounded Sunday at a rural church in South Texas a week ago today. And the gunman, a 26-year-old, found dead in a vehicle with two firearms a few miles away from where this attack took place in Texas, not far from San Antonio, about 20 miles, give or take a little bit, southeast. It's the latest in mass shootings that we have seen as 2017 is shaping up to be the most deadly year for mass killings in the U.S. in more than a decade. We're going to talk about active shooters this week with a guy who knows a lot about this. Mike Simon is uh, one of the heads of Arizona Security Institute. He's a former U.S. Marine, served this country proudly. Thank you, Mike, thank you. for your service, and um, thank you for being with us today. Absolutely. My pleasure. This is... You know, I think we don't want to think about this because you're talking now, it's the same subject, taboo, death. Yes. Nobody wants to talk about this <clears throat> stuff, but are you getting more and more calls, your institute, to try to help companies, churches, schools at all get yeah, more what secure? It, what it seems like is every time something does happen, we kind of get that boost. Um, we do, we've, I've had actually a few inquiries just in the last few days uh, from churches saying, hey, how do we... Um, put together a security plan, or how do we better reinforce our security plan? Right. Uh, I just had a conversation today uh, regarding a church that's looking to add security in light of what's happened in Texas. Let's queue up uh, 4.5, cut 4.5. This is a story you did with Linda Williams earlier in the week. This is a church that you helped secure. Yes, sir. And we also spoke to the pastor as well because there's, you're, you're being proactive there. Take a look. And we have to be prepared for something like this to happen. We hope and pray that it never does, but uh, there's evil in this world. It is a violent and grim reality that there is no sacred safe place from an active shooter. The Cornerstone Church in Chandler has a security team led by Mike Simon. He's a member of the church. If you take a church, for instance, you know, everything's going to start in the parking lot and work its way in. So if you can educate the people that are out there as you progressively come inside and hit the patio and hit the lobby and come inside the sanctuary, there should be some indicators. Simon, a trained security expert, helps assess soft targets and he trains people for active shooting situations in his business, Arizona Security Institute. He can't give blanket advice as every building and every scenario is unique. Simon says raising awareness and educating people is key. The biggest challenge, he says, is battling the mindset that it can't happen here. Some people don't want to talk about active shooter, especially within a church environment, but it's a reality. And Mike Simon, who you saw in that story, is our guest on Newsmaker Sunday, runs a security company, Arizona Security Institute. When you go into churches or schools or businesses, what is the message you want them to get? I want them to be proactive. I want them to be uh, at a point where they can, they can do things to prevent something from happening. And a lot of that is awareness. Um, if I can preach anything at all whatsoever to anybody, it's awareness. Being aware of your surroundings, looking for the things that don't look right, uh, I think is the biggest key. Give me a couple of for instances. Do you worry about the threat usually from the inside, somebody within the church congregation doing this? Or do you worry about somebody mainly from the outside coming in and doing it? To be honest with you both, um, if, you look at, if you look at some of the things that have happened throughout the last you know, year, even, even two years, it's been kind of a mixture. Uh, there's either been a tie in some aspect, like, like Texas. There was a, a relative that, was, that tied that church. Right. Tennessee uh, was kind of in the same, in same realm. Um, sometimes uh, it turns out to be uh, domestic violence related. Mm -hmm. um, the the ex-husband ex, you know, knows where the ex-wife goes to church because they used to go to church there. Or where they work. Uh, or where they work. They barge into the workplace and yep. end up shooting a bunch of people. When you see a lot of those, like I mentioned, the one in Ohio within the last year or so, it was, it was, wor it was workplace violence related. FedEx, uh, a lot of these ones you're seeing, um, it's a combination. And the other side, I, we do worry about the outside, uh, especially from a church perspective, uh, because if you look at a church, it's, it's kind of at the top of the, kind of top of the rung now. People feel religion is kind of that interesting topic and they're not really sure how to approach it and if they're upset with something and they don't believe in that particular faith uh, then they're going to go look for that large group of people based on that faith. They might act out there and, and maybe go into one of those things thinking that at a church 
people are going to be in a very peaceful frame of mind. They're not going to be thinking about a threat. Yeah, they feel safe. They feel safe. They right. feel comfortable. I mean, um, I mean, my family attends, you know, the church. My my kids are involved in um, different aspects of the ministries, the small groups. They come in during the week and on Sundays, and they feel comfortable. Kids run around. Families meet there. Families talk. They hang out. It's they they should feel comfortable. Let me read something um, from a, a woman who was interviewed after this church shooting. She says, "You feel like you can't control." what might happen to you at any time and you don't feel safe anymore for a lot of people that provokes fear we're, we're living in a time where we're getting bombarded with this kind of stuff we've had three major mass shootings in in 2017 yes, sir. and three of the big ones happening here in the last few months yeah it does it does provoke fear but i think you can combat a lot of that fear with education I think if, if people are educated on the tools to help mitigate what may happen or stop what happened, in some cases you can stop it. And, you know, if you see somebody that's sitting in the, uh, the, the front of the church and their vehicle is running for a long period of time, they may be approached by somebody. It may be, be approached by law enforcement I mean, because maybe they're waiting to figure out what they're going to do before they do it. And then if somebody makes that contact, it's amazing what contact can do sometimes. If I see you standing and you Hey, what are you doing? Yeah, and you look yep. uncomfortable. Hey, how are you doing today? My name is Mike. Uh, is there something I can help you with? A lot of times when you make that contact, it kind of throws them off. Uh, and it may change their mind about what they're going to do next. Are you better off, Mike? This, I mean, we saw this in Texas because two... In fact, let, let, me, sh let me show this because um, this is tape number three. This gets into armed citizens. Okay who stopped this to yes. a great degree in Texas. Take a look. Two Good Samaritans are being credited with stopping 26-year-old Devin Kelly as he fled the Texas church Sunday morning. An unidentified neighbor who heard the gunshots grabbed a rifle and chased Kelly, flagging down Johnny Langendorf. Together, they drove after the shooter. I was at an intersection and I saw the, I saw the firefight between um, the shooter of the church and a neighbor, a resident here in, in town. Um, after the firefight, the, the shooter took off and the neighbor came over, jumped in my truck and said he just shot at the church and said we have to get him. I said let's go and that's what we did. We know during that pursuit the suspect used his cell phone to notify his father that he had been shot and didn't think he was going to make it. Subsequently, he uh, uh, shot himself. We know that he expressed anger towards his mother-in-law. Who attends this church. Kelly's ex mother in law attended the church. Police say he had threatened her, and that is why he targeted the church, but she was not inside. However, his ex wife's grandmother is among the dead. Tonight, 15 people, including five children, are still in the hospital. Police say Kelly shot and killed himself. Okay, so the million dollar question here I'm going to put you on the spot because there is really no right answer, I, I fear. Would you rather, as a security guy, this gets into the whole gun debate. Would you rather have a church or a building full of people who are armed or not, given an active shooter situation? Okay, so I guess you can answer this two different ways. Uh, and in my position in the church itself and leading the security and leading the security and having a security team, I'd almost want to answer no because I, I feel that our team and the team I have in place is well trained enough to handle an active shooter. Now. On the other side, and answering the other, if I was a small church or if I was a small environment where I don't have that, then yes. If you don't have professional security. If you don't have professional security or a security team, then I would, I, I, would, I would prefer you have something better than nothing. Okay, so this would get into what we have here at Fox 10. It's a gun-free zone. However, we have armed people here guarding us yes. who are protecting us. So your fear from the security point of view would be, Mike, that if people are Packing in the church, you don't know who the good or bad guy might be. Yes, that's that, and that's why I say that what I said earlier about my team is in place because if I we walk into an environment and there's multiple people with guns, it's confusing. Now what? Okay, I can't really ask a whole lot of questions let, at that point. Let me ask you. Uh, we've had a lot of shootings in in schools. We've had several in churches. We've had them in office buildings. If you ever found yourself, you got a chance now to educate folks. 
If you were ever in an active shooter situation and you're in that place, you're inside, what should you do if you're not armed? Sure. So you can do a couple of different things. Obviously, if you can, if you can evacuate, do so. Find a door. So Find a be door. aware of exits always. If you're, if you're in a room, or even if you're in an environment like this, know where your, your first point of exit is. You know, maybe even your second point of exit. So if you can, ev if you can evacuate, by all means, and it's not, it's not going to be detrimental to, to life, get out. Get as far away as possible. Uh, if not, lock yourself in place. If you're in an office, compl office building and you can lock your door and shut your lights off and put something in front of the door, do so. Does that mean on the bottom of the door too so they can't see shadows or yes, light or movement? The likelihood of somebody making and taking time to try to open a door is slim. This is important information. Absolutely. Because they're, an active shooter, remember, they only have maybe two to three minutes before law enforcement's gonna, are going to arrive. And they know that. They know their time is very, very limited. Um, so they're going to keep moving. Least resistance. Yes, they're going to keep moving and moving and moving. Um, so if you can lock down, lock in a room, lock an office, close the door, shut off the lights, getting in a corner of a room, that I think that's your best course of action. Let me uh, run tape number one. This is one of the eyewitnesses who was in that church a week ago today. Take a listen. Everybody started screaming, yelling. Everybody got down, crawling under, I mean, wherever they could hide. And I could feel... Uh, the gunshots, I saw, I saw them on the carpet because they have carpet in there. I could see the gunshots, you know, coming down. And those are some of the 26 victims in the church in Texas a week ago. Uh, Mike Simon, Arizona Security Institute, is our guest on Newsmaker Sunday. So she describes, really, you're in there, you're trapped. There weren't great exits in that church to get out. People, we hear this over and over, were playing dead. One of the other options you really have, and most people don't think about it, uh, is to counter. Uh, go, after the, go after the subject and, mul and, mul with, and, and throw something at them. Multiple people. Multiple though, people, need... multiple objects, because what that, what that does is that, that throws them off in their focus. Because um, remember, they're trying to orientate everything. They're trying to make decisions. They're doing everything. If you can throw something in there, that makes the decision-making process stop and have to reset and then do it all over again. So um, anything you can do to interrupt Anything you them. can do to interrupt it. Uh, when I went through a training course for active shooter, that's one of the things they taught us was just take anything, chairs, uh, anything you possibly can grab. If you, if you go at somebody in mass, they can't, they, uh, they can't get everybody. Sure. You know, so I think that's, that's, an, that's, an, that's an absolute last resort if those other two things don't work. But in an environment like where you're in a room, if you can get up and attack the attacker, that's right. going to mitigate what's going to happen. I've always heard that if there's an active shooter, try to run as quickly as you can out of the area. But as you're doing it, zigzag so you're not Move. an easy beeline target. Keep yeah. moving because even a good shooter in a stressful situation has trouble hitting even a stationary yeah. target. Yeah. It's much tougher to hit a moving target, especially in an environment where multiple people are moving because now they're going to determine... We're, who's, who's next? It slows them down, yes, too, sir. if you're moving. Absolutely. So get moving. Don't. Yep. I mean, these people, poor people in the church, they didn't have anywhere to go, so they were laying down under the pews. Yeah, that's... Remember, you have three instincts. Anytime in a stressful environment, you have three instincts. You're going to fight, you're going to flight, or you're going to freeze. As a former Marine, um, the worst is freezing, right? Absolutely. That's why we train. We train for everything. We train for every environment known, known to man because um, we never know where we're going to go. Uh, the Marine Corps is designed to go anywhere within a short period of time. Uh, before we go to break, I need to point this out because I think it's really important for context. Um, we worry about these things. We see these things. We perpetuate some of this in the media, no doubt, because we, we cover it. We have to cover it, but it creates kind of an echo chamber. But it's important to point out that last year we lost... 30,000 people to car accidents. In mass shootings this year, we've lost 208. That's not an acceptable number. I'm not suggesting that, but just a point of reference of priorities and the odds of you getting caught up in this still are very, very, very small. But it's always good to be prepared, right, Mike? Yes, sir. Okay, we're back in a minute on Newsmaker Sunday with Mike Simon, Arizona Security Institute, talking about active shooter situations and what you can do and how you can protect your workplace, your church, your building. Back in a minute.
talking today about active shooter situations. We've had um, several mass shootings. 2017 is tracking to be the deadliest year for mass shootings in the U.S., mass killings in more than a decade. Uh, three of the five largest killings in Sutherland Springs last weekend, a week ago today, at the church, the Baptist Church. Las Vegas, which I covered a month ago, how time flies. We, we're, we're not even talking about Las Vegas anymore. And Orlando, Florida, the Pulse nightclub. Um, so some of the biggest have happened since 2016. Some of the biggest in this country's history. Mike Simon is a security expert with Arizona Security Institute. Um, he provides security for buildings, trains people. Let's take the Las Vegas situation. Uh, I heard a story on the ground when I was there that there was one guy, he was a Marine, former Marine. Mm -hmm. When the shooting started, everybody was scattering, yeah. not knowing where the shooting was coming from. He took a second to assess where are these shots coming from. And he figured out it was from the hotel. And he, start, he saw some of the flashes in the window. And he could hear it. He started moving people away and, mm -hmm. and out of harm's way. The, the instinct to run is great. When you have an elevated shooter, obviously, hitting the ground doesn't do you much good because no. you're going to get picked off, yeah, right? I mean, any ta any, we're taught tactics-wise, obviously, if you have the high ground, you have the advantage. And that shooter knew that in Las Vegas. I mean, have you guys started to assess what this means, having a guy in a, in a high-rise start to open fire on, on crowds. This is something that we've got to think about now. In yeah, the no, you have to think about a lot of different things. I mean, no matter what environment you're in, whether it's a concert, whether it's at a school, whether it's, you know, walking through the mall, um, it's absolutely a necessity to think through all of these things now, more so than we probably ever have. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you've seen things in history happen, but they've been so spread out right. up until now. Right. We would talk about the Texas Tower shooter yep. in 1966. We'd keep going back to that years later. Now we've got Columbine. Now you have we've so got... many more. Right, right, right. Sandy Hook. When mm -hmm. you're going into a workplace to train people on active shooter, is it, a, is it a hard sell with management to convince them to say, hey, we're going to have to be pretty graphic and we're going to have to be very honest with people? I think that's the hardest sell. I think they, wanna, they, they want you to talk about it, but they want you to talk about it and they want you to kind of tone it down a little bit um, in order to take the fear out of it. Uh, every time I do a presentation, I, I always got to start with that sentence. This isn't geared to scare you. This isn't, this isn't a scare tactic. This is an educational piece. Mm -hmm. This is to educate you to be prepared for the whatever that is. And are you running into companies or schools or groups that are averse to, to doing this just because they don't want to go there? Not as of yet. I mean, but those are probably the ones that haven't called us yet. Yeah, right. To be honest, uh, most ones I've done um, in in recent in recent months um, have been pretty positive. They after I'm all said and done, they have a lot more questions and 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 they're very positive about our visit. Let's take a look um, as we've talked about what happened in South Texas a week ago today, the Texas church shooting, 26 killed. A little bit of an update on what happened during that shooting, um, and playing back what the horrible events that unfolded in a place of worship, one of the last places you'd ever expect. Take a look. Gruesome new details from the Texas church shooting revealed just how horrifying the Sunday massacre was. Roseanne Solis and her husband survived. All of a sudden I hear like firecrackers popping. Ta, 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 ta. Everybody started screaming, yelling. Everybody got down, crawling under I mean, wherever they could hide. If, I mean, it was so scary, and that man was shooting. I mean, he was shooting hard. Sola says the shooter spared no one in his sight and targeted anyone making noise, including babies. Be quiet. Everybody was saying, be quiet. It's him, it's him. First Baptist Church was recording its service. According to police who saw the tape, the shooter first killed the audio and sound people handling the recording. Then he systematically shot anyone in sight, including Joanne Ward, who was killed when she used her body to shield her four children. Only two survived. A friend describes the heroic mother. She said, I would die for my children. Mm -hmm. And she ended up having to do that in the very end. And that does not surprise any of us in this community that knows her because she loved them so. And she 
she gave it up for them, ultimately. Today, the list of names of the 26 victims was released, showing how some families lost multiple members. Six people with the last name Holcomb were murdered, including a pregnant woman and a one-year-old. Vice President Pence, his wife, and Attorney General Jeff Sessions met with victims' families in Texas today. Pence was also briefed on the investigation and is scheduled to speak at a vigil this evening. I'm a believer, and I believe in prayer. And I know that at this moment of such heartbreak and loss in that community, that, that what most Americans are most able to do is to pray for those families. Mike Simon is our guest. He's a security expert with Arizona Security Institute. Um, you're having, you're busy these days. Is that safe We're to say? We're getting there. Yes, sir. I guess good for business, not great for society when you've got to worry about no. this stuff. In, in the workplace, let's talk about this for a minute before we go to break. How about identifying an employee who's spinning out, who you think might be dangerous? You know, the, the thing, I think our instinct is to not say anything to management if yes. we think somebody's spinning out. Because we don't want to alarm them, you don't want to rat somebody out. What about that? Well, they, they don't want to get into anybody else's business. They exactly. don't want to be like, oh, I don't want to be that guy. Exactly. Um, but, if you, but if you don't say anything, then nobody knows. I mean, you obviously you know you did the uh, video on ACTIC and AIDS yes, and Terrorism Awareness. Right. But if you see something, say it. It's, it, and it's echoed, and it's echoed and echoed. I just attended a... You saw that video. Oh, I saw it. You have no idea how many times no, I've seen No, I was video. honored to do it for the Phoenix um, Fire Department and for law enforcement. I just attended a, a, a training seminar at ACTIC um, just within the last two weeks, and that's one of the things that echoed again. If you see something, no matter how trivial, no matter how dumb you think it is, say something, because that could be the moment where you could have potentially prevented, prevented something. Okay, so if an employee you think is starting to talk about things that are really dangerous and, and troubling, you need to go to HR and Absolutely. say, hey, I got, I got a real concern about this. You have this. to. Now, I, I mean, you probably should always have done it, but if you don't do it and something happens, you're like, oh, that guy, yeah, I didn't tell you, that guy had this issue. Yeah, or, it all comes out afterwards. It, it, al yes. it always does. Right. Well, look at the, the shooting in Texas. Everything's coming out now afterwards, but nothing came out before. Yeah. And, and one of the troubling things we learned is, is given his history um, of domestic abuse, abuse of his child, because of those things, uh, the Air Force never, they should have forwarded that information on and he sh never, never should have been able to purchase a weapon. We're back in a minute with Mike Simon, Arizona Security Institute, talking about security in the age of active shooters. Back in a minute. Final moments on Newsmaker Sunday with Mike Simon, um, one of the co-owners of Arizona Security Institute, a former U.S. Marine, and he trains people in security measures in the wake of active shooter situations we've seen all across this country. Final moments, Mike, do you have any theory as to why we've seen an uptick in this thing? I think if I had to, if I had to say anything, I would say it goes back to awareness. It's the lack of awareness. I think people are going to take targets and... and Emphasize on targets that are easy, that are, that are soft, um, where there's multiple people, uh, very little avenues of exit. Um, if I'm going to be that bad guy, I'm looking for those large crowds. I'm looking for things that are going to be to my advantage. And you preach when you go out and talk security to companies and churches. Absolutely. You see something, yeah, say something. I, Anything out of place or something that draws your curiosity. Let somebody know. I just recently did a brief, brief uh, awareness presentation for our staff uh, at our church, uh, just in light of Texas, and that's exactly what I harped on. I don't care how trivial, how dumb. Call me, text me, you know, come get me, um, get one of my members of my team, because I'd rather know then mm -hmm. than two days later, a week later, something happens. You're like, oh, that guy. I saw that guy in the parking lot. Right. Or that guy was talking. Mike, thank you. Mike nope. Simon from Absolutely. Arizona My Security pleasure. Institute. And uh, bless you as well. And thank you for your service. Thank you. To the country. Appreciate Absolutely. it, Mike. We'll see you next week on Newsmaker Sunday.